Good afternoon and welcome. Today we will be talking on our Fairfield University Office of Residence Life webinar series about the residential life sophomore housing options. Today we have a brief agenda to go over. Um, we'll be covering our introductions of myself and my co-host. Um, the sophomore residential college housing option, sophomore housing options, uh, our general housing selection process, upcoming deadlines, and any questions that you may have. Um, my name is Charlie Souza. I'm the Associate Director of Residence Life, and I've been working here at Fairfield University for the past 11 years. Hi, I'm Jody Fitzpatrick. I'm the Assistant Director over in Residence Life, and I oversee um, the residential colleges, and I've been at Fairfield University going on my 17th year this year. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the sophomore residential colleges and what they are. Um, your students as first year students have an option to apply for sophomore residential colleges. These are specific to the sophomore population. Um, there are three of them, which we'll go into more detail about what they are and um, where they are um, in a little bit. But the idea of the sophomore residential colleges are for students to live in an intentional community um, and to kind of look at that question of vocation in a general sense. So they are going to be looking at what their passions and talents are um, and how they can use those as they move forward. Um, they will be looking at self-identity, um, looking at who they are, um, and how they can use some of their talents to continue to do things after college. Um, it also is a living and learning community. So therefore, students are not only living with each other, but they will be taking courses with each other. So each of the residential college students are required to take a course through the residential college each semester. Um, and these are core courses or major courses that are designed specifically for the residential colleges. Um, they will look at the questions of the residential college or possibly the theme of the residential college. And they are taken with other students that are in their programs. Um, the last part of it is, again, going back to that vocation and self-exploration. So some of the main components of the residential colleges are, um, like I said, the academic courses. Those are specifically designed for the residential college. There's also a mentoring component, um, and this is where students are placed into a group with six to eight other students. Um, there's an adult mentor, whether that be a faculty, alum, friend of the university. Um, and then they meet once a month for about an hour and a half. There is an activity that they usually do. There's reflection to this component. Um, and this is for them to take some time to really kind of look at themselves deeper and to answer some of those questions that they have sophomore year. Um, there are overnight retreats, and those are once a semester for 24 hours. Students are taken off campus. and. The first retreat, we kind of look at that question of community and what our community is, and they start to look at that identity um, question of who am I. The second retreat is actually off campus as well. It's 24 hours, and that is a time for them to kind of look deeper into themselves and to have a deeper discussion with their mentoring communities and the community that they are involved with. There's um, intentional programming that happens in our buildings um, in the residential colleges, and this is done not only through our resident assistants, but also through the students in the program. We ask the students to take ownership of the program and to do some programming through our committees that we have in um, the residence halls. And these are, um, things include going to New York to see a Broadway show, having dinner guests come in and talk about their passions and talents and what, how they use those in their lives. Um, Things such as community nights every week for the community just to get together and to hang out and have friends, you know, talk conversations, things like that. Um, there are also service opportunities. Each year, the residential colleges do a service trip off of campus, and this is an application process for students to apply. So during spring break, they could do a service trip through the residential colleges. We also offer service opportunities through our mentoring communities, through programming. Um, we go to soup kitchens. We'll do other things like that as well. So the three residential colleges are, one is Creative Life Residential College. The three questions that that college looks at is who am I, whose am I, and how am I called to live a creative and examined life? This residential college in particular looks at the question of vocation through a creative lens. It is um, taking the creativity and looking at it in different ways and how they can use their passions and talents um, in a creative lens outside of college. The Ignatian Residential College looks at the same two first questions, which is who am I and whose am I? And then the last question is how, who am I called to be? And the Ignatian College focuses on um, the Jesuit values and how 
they can develop leadership skills. Um, tr they look at leadership in the Ignatian tradition. They're looking at their identity. Um, so it's a little bit of that leadership in Ignatian tradition. Service for justice, again, who am I and whose am I? But the third question is, how am I called to serve justice? And this particular residential college looks at, it's rooted in social justice, and it looks at how your identities that you have and your privilege that you have, how you can use that to help those who are oppressed. So many of you are wondering, where will my students get to live in these residential colleges? So the Creative Residential College is housed in Faber Hall. Um, Faber Hall has quad rooms with a semi-private ba bathroom, so you'll only be sharing the bathroom with the students who live in your direct suite. Um, all suites are um, co-ed by that single gender that lives in that suite. The Ignatian Residential College is housed in Loyola Hall, which is on our residential quad. Um, this is a traditional style residence hall. Um, all of our rooms are double rooms in that building. Um, it has community style bathrooms on each wing, um, and each wing is co-ed. Um, lastly, um, the Service for Justice Residential College is in 70 McCormick Road, which is a traditional style residence hall, which also features community style bathrooms, as well as being co-ed by floor. Um, for the students who do not wish to participate in the residential college option, um, we do have two housing options for them. We have Casca and Claver Halls. Both halls are a, located in the village area of campus. Um, they're suite style housing. It's two traditional rooms conjoined by a bathroom. Um, all suites are co-ed, um, but they are single gendered in each specific suite. So males will only share bathrooms with males and females with females. Moving on to our general housing selection process. Um, here at Fairfield University, we do use a uh, general uh, random based lottery system, meaning that each individual student is assigned a random lottery number. Students will then create and form groups um, with the people who they'd like to live with. Um, once they've submitted their groups into our housing lottery system, they'll have the, um, they submit that information, we verify that that information is correct, and then we'll reorder the groups with the best lottery number from each group representing that group. Students will select housing based on this lottery number, and each group will have a specified date and time where they'll be able to select their housing. With this process, we do have two separate processes for the two different housing routes that we do go. As part of our selection process, we do run a non-residential college process for students electing to live in Casca and Claver Halls. Um, those do need to have um, either pairs or groups for the suite style housing um, for four students filling a complete suite. Um, the room selection for this process is on April 18th. For the residential colleges, there is a application process. So students do select to live in the residential colleges will have to apply. Um, that application actually will be available on December 1st on our website um, and students will apply. Um, we have a group of people who um, review the applications and application um, acceptance letters go out on March 6th to the students. That's right before our spring break. So students will find out through that application process which of the residential colleges they have been selected to um, be part of. And then that will also give them information about some of their housing lottery um, at that time. Um, the lottery for the residential colleges is a little different for each one. Um, but so for the Ignatian College, which is in Loyola Hall, and Service for Justice, which is in McCormick Hall, those students are going to enter as pairs of two people because those are the traditional housing. For Faber Hall, which is the Creative Life Residential College, students in that um, particular residential college will enter in as four because that is the suite style housing and has four per room. Um, our selection for the residential colleges will happen on March 30th, um, and that will happen for all three residential colleges. So some upcoming dates and deadlines that you need to be aware of. Our non-residential college lottery surveys open on April 3rd at 9 a.m. The information will be available to the students on my.fairfield.edu. 
the lottery process closes on April 11th at 4 p.m., meaning that students need to have their complete lottery group submitted to our housing lottery system prior to 4 p.m. on April 11th. For the residential colleges, um, like I mentioned before, the available application will be on December 1st, and that's at the website listed below, fairfield.edu slash rescolleges. Um, students have until February 16th to apply to the residential colleges. That will be the deadline where we will begin to review applications. Um, acceptance letters will go out on March 6th to the students. Again, that will tell them which of the residential colleges they've been accepted to and give them more information about housing lottery and other things that they need to do, including the um, registration for courses. Um, the lottery for the residential colleges opens on March 20th at 9 a.m. at myfairfield.edu and closes on the 27th at 4 p.m. So therefore, all of the students will need to have their groups in by that time as well. Um, and again, the um, lottery numbers and um, room selection will take place at the end of March. Now we're going to open it up to any questions that you may have about the sophomore housing lottery process. There are a few questions. Uh, what if my child goes to register for their residential college class and there is no room left? Will they be kicked out of the building for not being in that class? Yeah. So the residential college course registration actually happens before any of the other registration and those courses are specifically designated for just residential college students. Therefore, the students register before any of the other students um, and have priority registration for um, those courses. So they'll be able to get into at least one of the residential college courses. We also do work with students who, um, for example, we know many students who are science majors or engineering majors, um, and even some of our honor students do have trouble sometimes fitting a residential college course into their schedule. And we have an academic chair, Dr. Maurice Rose, who will work with them so that um, she can either find a course for them or give them an exemption from taking that course. So no, they wouldn't be kicked out of the program. Great, and what if my child cannot attend the retreat because of a prior commitment? We usually give the students the dates for the retreat very early on. Um, we will actually give them at, to them at Housing Lottery for next year so that they have them well in advance. Um, we, again, work with students. We have students who are athletes who can't attend retreat because of games or um, commitments for athletic type stuff. Um, we've actually had students who, you know, we, we it is a mandatory event, but we understand that there are things that do come up, um, a brother's wedding, a sister's wedding, things like that. And so we have worked with students who can't attend the retreat for whatever reason. But for the most part, I would say um, the majority of the students do attend the retreat, and it is only for 24 hours. Great. Um, are there any plans to change the random lottery system to a GPA-based GPA system? Um, we have in the past um, met with our constituents from FUSA as well as the Interresidential Housing Association um, and held open housing forums for many of our students. Um, and the larger consensus of this group is to keep the lottery system random. Um, so right now we don't have any plans to change it, but we do have the ability in the future if there is want and desire from the students to work with them in order to change the housing lottery system from our current random lottery system to um, you know something else in the future, whether it be a GPA-based system or something else that we haven't thought of yet. Great. Uh, two more questions. Are there any plans to build new dorms on campus? Um, currently, right now, um, we are in the process of finalizing the plans for a new residence hall. Um, which will actually sit between um, Gonzaga Hall and Regis Hall. Um, currently, right now, the building is named 42 Languth Road. Um, it'll be a sophomore building. Um, it'll kind of have a hybrid housing between traditional housing and suite-style housing for our students. Um, we are planning on um, starting construction somewhere between December and March. It's all weather dependent right now. Um, but we are planning on opening that building for fall of 2018. Um, another question, are there any other housing options for sophomores or are they guaranteed a spot in one of these residence halls? 
Um, so right now, um, we're in the process of working um, through the different things. As you can see, the students do have two different housing options to go through. They can either participate in the residential colleges or the non-residential colleges. Um, in the event that we do not have enough housing in the suite style housing, which has been very popular over the last few years. Um, we have had small numbers of students living in either Loyola Hall on the third floor and not participate in the Ignatian Residential College. And we do have a small number of students currently that are sophomores living in Gonzaga Hall. And the last question that I see, what if my child does not have a specific group or other person to room with during the process, can you proceed as an individual? Um, so with the residential colleges, um, we generally encourage students, if they are thinking about that, to apply. They can apply as individual students, and we will work with them to find a compatible roommate during the residential college um, housing process. Um, for students who um, are looking to participate in the non-residential college process, um, we will work with them, but our housing system only allows complete groups to participate in the housing lottery process. Um, in years past, um, we have worked with the area coordinator staff in our first year buildings, um, as well as through the Office of Residence Life and held roommate finder nights. Um, this goes for individuals who are looking to pair up with groups. This is also working with groups that may not have a complete group that are looking for individuals to round out their groups. Um, they do have the ability to fill out um, roommate finder, we call it the roommate finder binder questions. Um, it's a fun little name there. Um, and this allows students to fill out their housing preferences on there. Um, they can look for groups to join and groups can also look for um, individual students to join their groups as long as their housing preferences do match. Great, those are all the questions. Um, on the screen, you can see um, there's some contact information. So if you have further questions, you can either contact Charlie, myself, or anyone at Residence Life at residencelife at fairfield.edu. Or if you have specific questions to the residential colleges, you can contact me at rescolleges at fairfield.edu. Um, and we'd be happy to answer those questions through email as well.